Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Spares Box. Today we're back on the S13. It's uh, going to be a bit of a, an odd job day again. Today we've got uh, some suspension arms, we've got some chassis bracing, got some coil covers and all other odds and ends to get it back together. So unfortunately we don't yet have our front guards, so that means we can't put our front bar on, which means we can't make our front crash bar yet. But uh, they'll, be, they'll be here as soon as they're ready. They are getting made to order. So. Uh, a lot of things at the moment are out of stock because of COVID. Everyone's just going crazy building cars at home, which is cool. It's great that it's happening. But as a uh, flow on effect, we're, we're seeing parts availability um, sort of not what it used to be. So unfortunately, you can't ring a supplier and stuff turns up tomorrow anymore. Um, however, we're going to push through. We'll uh, get a heap more odd jobs done today. Then hopefully the next time you see it, we'll be putting panels on. But we'll uh, keep smashing away. Let's get into it. We've just fitted these guard braces up. These are actually harvested from the donor front cut that the VH45 and transmission originally came from. Uh, they're really handy for uh, minimizing front end flex on Sylvia's and 180SX's. These are quite common to actually crack uh, in this general area through the firewall, um, from the lower rail to the firewall, that whole sort of area, it can uh, flex quite a lot. So these do help with that flex. Um, I've seen quite a few cars running these now and none of them have the firewall cracks that I've seen in the ones that don't have them. Um, while that's not conclusive evidence alone, um, it's definitely not going to hurt to run these. Um, they didn't cost us anything, but even brand new, they're quite cheap. Um, they're pretty simple to install. You've only got to drill two holes and then bend a little bit of sheet metal out of the way. Um, I'm not sure if originally these came with a sandwich plate that goes on the inner edge, but where we've drilled the holes, this is double skinned anyway. Um, these were actually welded to the, to the donor car on this end. However, we've just gone with the bolt-in solution. That's how the manufacturer originally designed them. And it's easier to remove the doors should we have to uh, down the track rather than trying to cut stuff off or, or muck around with it. So a uh, nice handy little uh, bolt-on part, well, more or less bolt-on part to minimize the firewall cracking and flex in an S13. got our front all back together it's fairly simple it's not a crazy drift car so we don't have um, like massive lock knuckles or super wide arms we've just got a effectively a roll center correction which also adds more lock and then obviously we've now added the caster rods and it's already just got basic coilovers in it so now we're going to move to the rear end where at the moment it's 100 percent standard other than the coilovers so we're going to whack in some camber arms and some subframe pineapples to start to lock that together then once all that's done, we're going to swap in a uh, one and a half way diff and that'll be more fun on the track than a lazy viscous that's just going to single peg when it gets too hot.
These are drift pineapples or subframe pineapples or subframe lock kit. They've got heaps of different names, but they all do the same job. Basically what this does is it fills the void between the rubber bush and the body of the car. So effectively when you clamp these between the factory subframe washers and the body, it just locks everything together solid and, and basically um, deletes the subframe bush. Um, it's really good for drift cars because it basically lock, locks all your geometry in. The subframe doesn't wander around the back of the car. Um, these bushes have definitely had their day. You can, if you want to pull the whole subframe out, you can buy complete solid bushes. Um, it's not really a task I want to undertake right now with this car. It's going to be a bit of a mission to do it. So I'd rather just whack these in for now. Um, they're, they're pretty good stopgap. Um, they're easily uh, installed and easily removed again. So if you want to run a drift day, you can put these in for the track day and then take them back out if you run a street car. Um, the one massive downside to these is they transmit a lot more driveline noise through the body of the car. So if you do run these on a street car, your NVH will go through the roof. However, the, uh, the benefits for us way outweigh the NVH because this thing's not exactly whisper quiet anyway. But we're going to whack these in. The, uh, the top ones which have the studs going through the subframe have a notch in them. So you don't have to drop the subframe the whole way down. They just go in nice and easy. And then the bottom ones just push in when you install your washers. Well, as project cars go, everything starts to take a lot longer towards the end of the build. Uh, I saw a comment 
in the YouTube videos recently where it said the last 20% of the build takes 80% of the time. And with, with this car, it's been very true. Obviously, four or five episodes ago, we had the engine in, we had all the transmission, and it looked like it was very nearly complete. However, piecing the actual parts to make the car function together has been a lot slower than obviously just jamming an engine in. So we're still chipping away at it. Um, tons of progress today. We've got all of our suspension and our drive line pretty much sorted now. Um, so with that, we're going to send it off for a wheel alignment because there should be nothing else we've got to play with. Um, that will then affect the wheel alignment later. So then that means once we have all the panels on, we can pretty much go and take it for a run. Um, we're not sure where we're going to take it yet because 99% of drift events in New South Wales have been canned. Um, unfortunately, Maroolan aren't operating drift events at the moment. Same deal with Wakefield. So we're pretty much limited to either wet pan or peanut at Eastern Creek. But that'll at least be enough for a shakedown. Obviously, 400 and something horsepower car on a wet skid pan is not going to be super exciting to watch, but it'll at least give us a good shakedown and some data to make some adjustments or, or potentially have to repair stuff. But we'll uh, pack it up for today. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.